YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here. And I'm going to be back in Total War Warhammer 2. Not long ago, I showed you a Skaven build that had a double plague priest and a gray seer on the uh, screaming bell and told you that it was a very powerful army. And indeed it is. Uh, there's a few players out there who sent me replays saying that they had faced it and uh, wanted to show how they had managed to face it. And in this case, you're going to have the exact same build I showed you from the Skaven. It's every everything the same, down to the same unit. And then on the green skin side, you're going to have a whole bunch of units spread all over the map, which was what a lot of people in the chat suggested might be the best way to go, which is to just split up and um, make it difficult for the Skaven to know any one place to attack. So here you're going to see um, mangy marauders, forest uh, spider rider archers, uh, more spider rider archers, a couple of boar boys including the tusk mob. There's only two infantry. And part of the reason why that is is because this build excels against infantry, though it does have some anti-large components. Rat ogres, and um, if they can support a fight without being charged, Plague Monk Sensor Bearers will do horrendous amounts of damage to just about any unit. Um, so in this case, the Greenskin Army, if it just you know comes to face the Skaven, will get ripped apart. There's a couple more uh, Spider Rider Archers, Moon Howlers, Death Creepers, so lots of skirmishers. And what you see is the Greenskin player is going to take his time, keep the Skaven player as split up as possible, keep him moving all over the map, and not give him any one target to attack. The uh, Lord is going to be Wurzag, most likely due to Effigy of the Git, and um, I don't know, maybe a Foot of Gork or something like that, but uh, I'm thinking here we go and Effigy of the Git is going to be his main play here. The um, Arachnorok Queen is a great pick because nothing in the Skaven army is really a good answer to the Arachnorok Queen. And the only way they could defeat it would be to just destroy all the other units and then get into combat with the Arachnorok Queen. I'm thinking for the Skaven, probably the best way to defeat this uh, for them is to just pull up in a tight formation and sit here in the forest. And that may be lame. And some people are like, really here? They bring that army and then they camp in the forest? Well. I mean, it's their best bet here. It helps run out the um, the arrows, and the greenskin player would not be able to get good, clean, open charges like this. Um, would I do it? Would I go sit and camp in the forest after picking this army? No. I would just go ahead and go forward. I'd pick the rush build. I'd play a rush build. But just be aware that if you try something like this, the Skaven player might very well do that to you, which is to just go sit in the woods, at which point your archers and your cavalry are going to become a whole lot less effective as will some of your monsters. But in any case, I like what the Greenskin player is doing. It's an isolate and destroy kind of mentality. Get a couple of Skaven units here and there away from the main fight, charge them with boar boys, shoot them with archers, route them one by one, focus your uh, archer fire on rat ogres, because um, they're a large support unit. So it makes sense. Pull back, don't take any fights until you absolutely have to. And you can see that so far it's yielding some pretty pretty good results. There's already a couple of Skaven slaves uh, who have been taken off the field. But Skaven player striking back literally with warp lightning. So far from over. You can see Wurzag sneaks up here. He's obviously looking to use an effigy to get. He's going to turn around and run, but he does get it off there. And then just look how badly this Doom Wheel tears him up when it catches him. It just starts plowing him along the battlefield. And it's going to cause terror on Wurzag and terror out him. Fortunately, it pushes Wurzag right here into the support of these uh, war boys and then the waiting spider. So Wurzag, although he was in huge danger there, is going to actually get away. If he would have been a little bit closer to the white line, could have been dangerous. But again, the support of these other units, when the greenskins blocked up, the Skaven player punished him with warp lightning. So good call. I would say though here that the uh, Skaven player is kind of scattered with the uh, Plague Furnaces and the Screaming Bell. Those need to get focused into one spot with the support of um, with the support of all these infantry that are up here, and then use those breath attacks and other stuff to uh, to deal damage to the Greenskin infantry. If the Greenskin infantry can be dealt with here, it's possible that the Skaven can win this. Yeah, look at the uh, cavalry charges, but again, look, here's one, two, three, all separated, 
and not all three necessarily using all their um, their magical breath abilities and just combining combining their terror for max effect. And then the uh, the Doom Wheel. So I think at this point the Skaven player is struggling a little bit to micromanage. And to the Green Skin player's credit, he's given him an army that's a little more confusing how to micromanage against. You know what I mean? There's there's several little battles all over the battlefield, and it's causing the Skaven player to not do well in any one of the small battles. So I would say that the Greenskin player's um, basic plan here is working, and working quite well so far. The only thing you'd have to be careful of is if this uh, Skaven army was being managed a little more tightly, it's going to make this, um, this counter slightly more challenging. But to be honest, I mean, this, this Skaven build is a little overpowered. <laughs> <laughs> I say it a little overpowered. It's, it's pretty dang strong. It's pretty dang strong. So being able to counter it at all uh, is definitely a task. But I, I do like the way the green skin player did it here. I believe it's probably the right way you have to approach this, which is don't feed the Skaven army the units they want. Now, of course, when this is over and we see what the outcome is, I'll go discuss with you a couple of interesting points, at least what I think are interesting points. There's continued board charges back here, trying to help get rid of infantry. But uh, it is still a very close fight. You can actually see slightly in favor of Skaven right now. So you can see that little little mistakes like this where the, the Tusk mob actually gets caught here. So that's going to be bad news. Those Rat Ogres will actually do some pretty solid damage here. So a bit of a micro mistake there by the green skin player, but he's going to pull those units away. Back here, um, the, uh, the spider and some spider riders and savage orcs were able to single out and destroy a plague priest, so getting these guys off the battlefield does mean the death of this Skaven army for the most part, because, you know, the, the enemy will lose leadership. Here are these uh, sensor bears, like I said, they can do some armor piercing damage, so to be a little bit careful, but only that single unit out here with the spider probably won't go good. But these fast movers can help chase off the uh, plague priest, which actually came back from routing. Wurzag is sitting in the back, waiting for uh, a better opportunity. Summoned rats gonna chase off spiders. And then back here, a huge portion of the Skaven army really trying hard to chase out some of this cavalry. They do get the broken tusk mob. But again, the Skaven player is now more split up, and it's allowing the Spider to kind of work down units uh, individually, which again for the Greenskins is precisely what they need here. They can just avoid the summon units if possible, and those will eventually crumble. But we've got the uh, Death Creepers over here getting some shots at some high value targets. But again, the Skaven player, just his army all over the place at this point. Uh, not combined, and um, he's gotten a lot of engagements that have not been favorable for him. Let's fast forward a bit. There we go. So we move up in closer here. Uh, again, look at this one. The uh, Arachnorot Queen just sitting back here actually doing a little shooting. The Arachnorot Queen actually has a huge amount of ammunition and is capable of delivering quite a bit of damage over time. See here, the Skaven's gonna send in uh, sensor bears, but I mean, there's just not a lot of damage being done to the Arachnorot Queen. And without killing Wurzag, uh, the Skaven aren't really gonna have a prayer against the Arachnorot Queen. She has too much armor. And although you have armor piercing attacks from the uh, the Gracier and the Plague Priest, it's still gonna be challenging because the uh, they're not anti large, also. And they're just really not all that well suited to fighting the um, to fighting these types of units. This is really an anti-infantry army. So when someone turns around and brings a lot of cavalry and monsters, that's absolutely what will start to cause problems for the Skaven player in these matchups. So looks like the um, the Gracier here is probably going to meet his doom. Skittering around up there on his giant bell. It's pretty cool looking. Some summon clan rats to defend him. So, sorry if y'all hear a bunch of noise right now. There's I'm in the hotel and I think the housekeeping people are outside vacuuming and it's making a whole bunch of noise. But in any case, yeah. You can see the, uh, the Grace here is in pretty rough shape. And the archer attacks continue to come. So it won't be long before this unit gives up the ghost here. 
gives up the rat ghost. Still a little bit of ammunition left for some of these uh, skirmish units coming back. So the Greenskins recollecting their uh, their strength here, continuing to focus the Gracier, whose leadership is now starting to fail. Wurzag just has to stay clear of enemies, and at this point he's doing that. Yeah, so the enemy, enemy lord is definitely on his last legs. There's not a ton of units left with ammunition, though, for the Greenskins. But here's a little bit. Ooh, it's going to get good hits, too. Is this uh, Forest Goblin Archer? It has poison, which hurts leadership, too. And that could be a big deal here. It might actually force the route. So yeah, the, <laughs> the Gray Seer is just hanging on by a thread. And there's going to be some cycle charge of Archer units that are out of ammo. If Wurzag has another effigy to get and can get a hold of this Plague Priest, it'll be a huge deal. You can see here, Ragnarok Queen trying to avoid a solo engagement against an armor-piercing unit. And getting some more help in here. And then there's going to be a nice rear charge here to get rid of the uh, Plague Monks. Enemy Lord's still alive, but no ammo over there. So he's just trying to avoid Wurzag and some of these other units. But again, you can see the... Uh, Skaven player getting singled out now. Still a very close balance of power. Nice charge by the Savage Orc Biggins. But these, uh... There we go. Decent little hit with the uh, magic off of the Plague Furnace. There we go. Effigy to get the Grey Seers. <laughs> That animation was a little bit screwy, but hilarious. So the Gray Seer's down, and the power bar now actually starting to shift to the green skins. They have no answer to the spider. It still actually puts quite a lot of power in the hands of the Skaven here. But um, it's not going to happen. The spider is going to be too much to overcome here. So I think that the green skins just need to combine their forces. There is a summon clan rats, which will help a lot. Anything the Skaven can do to bog down the spider and cause damage will be useful at this point. And then just trying to use the Plague Priest maybe to cause fear, but, I mean, it's not working. Skaven army is breaking apart. Let's just kind of fast forward and show you how this ends. The spider is going to do some more charges. I mean, the Skaven player is trying to get away with his leadership unit, but at the same time, if he gets away, it just leaves his other units to be killed. And you can see a lot of the Greenskin units routing whenever that... Plague Furnace comes around, but it's just not going to be enough for the Skaven. It'll be a Pyrrhic victory, but the uh, Greenskins are going to take this one home. I think the Skaven player, um, I know he was tempted to split up all over the map, definitely should have kept his army closer together, and it would have made this more difficult for the Greenskins. Not impossible, but more difficult. But again, the Greenskins army was designed to pull the Skaven player's army apart, and it achieved that goal. So it ended up being a good pick. And uh, if we go back, though, I would tell you a couple of the things to be careful of um, is when you're when you're the Greenskins or the Skaven, for instance, and you were coming into this matchup, in this case, uh, it looks like the uh, Greenskin player successfully guessed what the Skaven was going to use. And you know what? That's probably not that outlandish because the Greenskins like to go infantry heavy. And uh, that Skaven army could be potentially a good one against them. But the other thing with the Greenskins is they have giants. They have Arachnorok spiders. They can certainly take things in the opposite direction, which can be very dangerous uh, for the Skaven if they go with that rush army. I would say the thing to be careful of, and I don't have the army set up here on my laptop. I just have them on my desktop at home. But there are Skaven builds with anti-large that'll have a couple of warp lightning cannons and then uh, stuff like these poison wind globideers. And uh, this type of Skaven set up here would be pretty nightmarish for what the um, for what the Greenskins had there because it has a couple of uh, slave, Skaven Slave Slingers and other stuff in there that can um, basically help push back some of the Skirmishers from the Greenskins. Uh, and the Warp Lightning Cannons can do some pretty tremendous damage to large units. There were enough Skirmishers in that Greenskin army that... Even this build would have been a little bit challenging, but it would have definitely brought more trouble um, to the Greenskin player 
than that one. So I would I would say be careful because the Skaven definitely have anti-large capabilities and they definitely have good skirmishers um, that can give the greenskins fits. Um, so you got to be a little bit careful about that. But in that case, I thought it was a, a good pick by the Gabo King um, using the greenskins there and taking down a very tough army from the Skaven. Hope you all enjoyed this one. I do apologize the videos are a bit slow because I'm on the road. My internet connection is relatively slow and I've been very busy. So just be patient. Videos will roll along as I'm able to get them up. Appreciate MSI sponsoring my channel. Appreciate you all being here. And I will see you on another episode soon.